Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can do a drawing of a mountain like this in charcoal. I did the full scene but I'm mostly going to be talking about the mountain and that's what I'm going to be focusing on. So let's have a look. Uh, the paper is about 9 times 12 inches. It's already secured with a tape. And now I'm going to cover everything with charcoal powder to create some midtone that I'm going to work on top of. I created the charcoal powder by sharpening my vine charcoal stick. Normally I don't buy charcoal powder, I just create it from the sharpening residue. I can either sharpen one of my charcoal pencils or vine charcoal sticks. And here I just sharpen the vine charcoal stick and I'm going to get some charcoal powder which is uh, very soft and easy to move around. Here I felt that I needed a little more so I added even more powder and I'm gonna blend that with a brush as best as I can. Obviously there's gonna be a mess here with all the charcoal residue flying around but I'm gonna clean that up. And I used the largest brush that I had at hand to make the blending uh, both faster and smoother to make everything more even. Even though I'm not too concerned about the way it looks now because I'm going to be refining everything and I'm going to be adding some more detail to it so it doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to create some midtone here that I can work with because I'm going to be drawing both the darker areas and lighter areas on top of that. I'm going to be drawing darker areas with my charcoal pencils and vine charcoal and I'm going to be drawing lighter areas uh, by removing the charcoal using erasers. So I'm going to start with the shadow side of the mountain because obviously we're going to have the shadow side and the light side of the mountain. And I'm drawing the shadow side of the mountain or the dark side of the mountain using my charcoal pencil. I'm trying to create some jagged edges, jagged lines to imitate the surface and those sides of the mountain, the mountain slopes, to make it look like it's made of rock. And I'm going to leave some of that rough texture in. Now I'm using my kneaded eraser to clean up uh, the highlights. I'm lifting up the charcoal that I put down using my brush. I'm lifting up that charcoal to create these lighter areas and you can see how much contrast I'm already getting because the kneaded eraser is cleaning up these areas very nicely. But the thing is that I have to keep reshaping uh, my kneaded eraser so that it would be able to lift up the charcoal and create cleaner lines. So like I said this is the light side of the mountain and my light source is obviously coming from the left and as I progress with the drawing of this mountain I'm going to have to stay consistent with my light source keeping in mind that the light is coming from above and from the left in our case. Now here as you can see I'm also adding a little more variation in the light side as well. I'm adding some more value there, I'm adding some more texture in between these areas of lighter value to make it look like the surface is rough and like we have these smaller uh, cracks and jutting rocks in between. That's because I want the whole mountain to stand out from the background. If I left it flat like that, it wouldn't really look like a mountain. So the mountain has to stand out from the background both in terms of its range of value and in terms of its texture. And I made the background a little bit smoother using my brush and now it looks really smooth. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to want to have a dark uh, or maybe slightly murky sky with no clouds. I'm just going to leave it like that because I'm going to be adding a sufficient amount of de detail elsewhere. So I want the mountain peak here to really stand out against the fairly monotonous background. Now these spots or darker areas that I'm putting in uh, they're supposed to add some further variation in these mountain slopes and 
make it look like some of the rocks are jutting out or maybe they aren't covered with snow. Now here on the left I'm going to create some more lighter areas like maybe there's another smaller peak there that's getting more light. So I could have left it like that with just one small peak but I'm going to try to make everything a little more complex by adding a few more smaller peaks and ridges here. Here I'm drawing another peak that's kind of extending towards us and on the left there's going to be another peak that's uh, getting some more light. And I'm drawing in, I'm drawing in these darker areas using my charcoal pencil. And uh, I'm doing uh, I'm doing some of the highlights using my pencil eraser. Now there are some differences between using a pencil eraser and a kneaded eraser. The kneaded eraser lifts up the charcoal nicely, especially if it's fine charcoal and it's very easy to move. And you can create these very light areas which are almost white. But the pencil eraser gives you more control, so I usually like to use a combination of both. Now you can see that these darker areas are kind of getting fewer and further in between one another as I move further down the bottom of the mountain. That's because I want to fade the bottom of the mountain to make it look like it's kind of fading into the mist. And I only want the snow-covered top to stand out because it's above the mist and it's uh, the, the sunlight is hitting it on one side. <clears throat> so you can see how the mountain is starting to take shape because of all of these contrasts in value. The range of value is very important because otherwise you can't show shape of an object. If you don't want it to look flat you need these areas of high contrast. And I'm also trying to add a little more texture everywhere because I want the mountain to stand out not only in terms of its contrast but also in terms of its texture. And I'm still using my kneaded eraser to clean up some of the highlights on some of these edges to make these lighter areas stand out even more. But I'm softening everything further down because like I said I want to make that kind of blurry. And I'm just adding some more of these darker details on the ridge closer to us. And if I feel like some of them are too pronounced, like they have too much texture, I'm softening them either with a brush or using my tortillon, tortillon and I can also use the tortillon to modify their shape and also maybe add some of these uh, specks in, the, in that misty portion of the mountain where I don't need as much contrast. So I'm going to keep adding those and keep trying to make the mountain slopes a lot more interesting with a lot more variation because it's rocky terrain and obviously uh, there are a lot of these uh, darker and lighter areas I want to make the viewer feel like they are looking at an object which has really rough surface and like I said to create that you need both the range of value and the range of textures so I'm just going to keep adding in some of these highlights here and there just to try to make the uh, sides of the mountain a little more interesting and a little more complex. <coughs> uh, now I'm pretty much done with the mountain but to complete the scene I want to create a full landscape here and I'm going to draw some mountains in the background. Now I'm going to use a similar approach but when you want to draw mountains in the distance you have to make them a little bit lighter because of the atmospheric effect 
everything in the background needs to be a little bit lighter, a little bit more blurry, less defined, with less contrast, and of course less detail and texture. So this is the way you can create depth in your drawing when you're, cre uh, when you're drawing landscapes. When you have an object like a mountain in the foreground, which is a lot more defined with a lot of contrast, to create some depth and illusion of distance, you can add in some mountains in the back using uh, smaller ranges of value and blurrier shapes which are less defined and which are kind of fading in the distance. And the closer they are to us, the more defined they are, and the further they are, uh, the harder it is to discern their shape. And you can see that I even pulled some highlights on those mountain peaks in the back, but I didn't do that with an eraser. I did that with a Q-tip because I didn't want to create too much contrast. I'm going to add a few more peaks here on the right as well. And once I do that, my background and my midground is going to be done. And I'm going to be done with the mountains. And I'm going to be moving on to, to the foreground, where I'm going to put some trees. So like I said, I'm just cleaning up some of the highlights on, on these mountains using my Q-tip because I want less contrast. If I did that with an eraser, I would create almost white areas and that would draw too much attention and it would ruin that illusion of distance that I'm trying to create. So I'm softening everything with a brush once again and now I'm going to be moving on to the foreground. I'm going to make the foreground a lot darker, like maybe it's on another mountain slope looking onto this mountain. And I'm going to put some rocky terrain and some trees there. And it's going to create a nice contrast uh, with the lighter portion of the drawing behind it. So first, down, first I put down some vine charcoal just to create some darker area and then I'm gonna try to uh, come up with some shapes of trees here in the foreground which are also casting a shadow to the right because I have to stay consistent with my light source and I'm gonna do these canopies of these trees with a vine charcoal stick because that makes it a lot quicker and easier. Drawing trees with the vine charcoal is um, easy in the sense that you can cover large areas very quickly and it allows you to be more spontaneous and use the shapes which the stick is giving you. It's very similar to drawing with a brush or painting with a brush so it makes the process a little bit quicker but at the same time I think you have a little bit less control over the shapes so I'm going to try to use a combination of both the uh, vine charcoal and the the, pen, uh, the charcoal, charcoal pencils. So I drew another tree which is slightly further away in th than the two on the left. And now you can see how we are trying to create some distance here you can al already feel like these trees are uh, much closer to us than the mountain and like the mountain is much clo closer to us than those uh, mountain peaks in the distance which seem really really far away. So here on the terrain in the foreground I try to create a little bit of variation I'm not really committing to anything I just created some portions of lighter and darker value but uh, I'm not really sure how detailed I want it. I added some more trees uh, here. You know, some of them are smaller and feel like they're maybe further in the in the distance. <clears throat> so I'm just adding some more variation in the terrain here in the foreground. I want to make it look like a rocky terrain with a little bit of grass here and there and maybe a small dirt path here on the left. 
uh, but like I said I don't really care if I create too much de uh, detail there because I just want it to be darker to create some tension with the rest of the drawing I want that contrast I'm gonna draw another large tree here on the right you can see that it's going to be even closer to us than the ones on the left and these are all coniferous trees and I'm trying to draw these clusters of needles but obviously they are grouped and I'm drawing them with strokes of my vine charcoal and then refining them refining them using my charcoal pencils and also tutillions I added some more trees I want to make it look like this place that that is looking on this mountain is uh, maybe covered with trees like maybe there's a forest there and I'm just adding some more texture and refining the shape of those trees. I went through this part of the video a little bit quicker. It's all in time lapse, but I, like I said, I wanted to focus on the mountain. I went over this part a little bit faster. Uh, so the mountain is done here, and I've signed the drawing. If you want to see uh, the full length real time video, you can check out my Patreon if you're interested in that. If not, you can just uh, subscribe to my channel because I have lots of videos like this. I have lots of landscapes, also portraits and drawings of animals, all kinds of stuff. So you should check out my other videos as well. Anyway, that was it for this drawing. Thank you for watching. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye.